Welcome back to the Eastern Clash. We're getting set up for game number three in this best of five series. L5 really coming out and dominating, showing history once again that they are just solid against Tempest as they are up two to zero. The second the brackets came out, uh, you know, everyone was looking at it saying, okay, Tempest has a shot here, but we're going to get to see L5 versus Black twice. And if this continues, we are going to see it. The thing is, most people expected Black to be in this lower bracket just simply because of how they were dominated in HGC Korea. Uh, and now, you know, it's going to be a rematch here. L5 will have the, uh, their second chance if they can win just one more game. And as I said before, I really do want to look to Tempest to just play standard. They absolutely can take games off L5. They did so in HGC Korea. They won that game on Dragonshire. Maybe go to that map, bring out the Nazebo we saw in the past from them. That's what I want to see. And I feel like, you know, they're not... It's not going to be easy to win a straight-up game against L5, but it's not impossible. And I feel like it's a higher likelihood than just trying to run around the bush with these drafts. Yeah, so Dragonshire, obviously the battleground that we might want to see from them if we are going to have a chance for them to even start this comeback, this huge comeback they have to pull off against L5. So Nazebo was played on that battleground at that yeah, time? Yeah, and uh, we've seen them play it twice. Uh, they played it actually in this tournament already. They look for that late game, look for those team fights. They use Nazebo to... You know, kind of just survive until 20. Uh, they just used it against E Star in such a manner. Worked out really well for them. You get 20. You have this tank gear in Azebo who's very powerful. He's got a spider build going. And then you just win a team fight. If you win a supreme late game team fight, if you've got one, even just one keep that's got its wall open, you just go win the game. Even you can go through that keep wall sometimes. Uh, that's what I'm looking for here for Tempest. That's what I like to see. Get a win, take that momentum. And for me, I want to see sign on, I guess, quote unquote, a normal tank, ETC or Murden, someone that allows him to be that hyper aggressive character that he wants to be. Tyrael to a degree allows you to do that, but there's some more timing issues that you would normally not have to deal with on Murden and ETC. So I would love for them to draft around that and hopefully get a hero pickup that can allow him to play how he would like. Now we are going to Sky Temple for this third match. Sky Temple is a map that uh, historically g -Clef and I have seen picked in set three in three O's, sometimes in set two when a team is winning and looking very dominant. It's a map that ends quickly. You don't show too much here. And, uh, you know, it, it, when I've talked to the Korea teams, they've said, you know, very similar things. I like play on this map when I'm ahead. I like to close series out fast and conserve energy, go into the next series. So that may be why L5 is taking this. Uh, it's a bold statement. But uh, they are going to take it, and instead of going to Dragonshire, it's going to be the draft that they're looking to once more. Tempest here, they're going to grab the first ban. And I'm worried for them here. Uh, you know, this is a tough map. There's a lot of different strategies you can pull out that are non-normal strategies. It's a very long map. The lanes are very far apart. And just seeing, uh, you know, the map come towards them this way, I worry they may try to do something tricky again rather than just playing straight up, which I'd prefer. We'll see what they do here, as it is their first ban. Yeah, the question is, what are they gonna grab for their first big? Uh, in terms of history, it's always been that Terriel, they're gonna take out that Zeratul, not one to deal with the pressure once again. So we're gonna have a possible ban here from L5. They're hovering Alarak, but Tassadar should be the choice. There it is. Now, Tempest, do you grab Terriel here? I would not mind seeing ETC instead, but again, the Terriel uh, and his strength continues to be a pickup for our Korean teams. Of course, L5 knew this would happen uh, as soon as they banned Tassadar. So perhaps Tempest was hoping they'd ban Tyrael. I doubt it, though, as this just feels all too obvious and all too easy for L5 in terms of the draft so far. What comes next for Tempest is, of course, the scarier part. But I think L5 will prioritize globals here. We may even see the Falstad picked up or perhaps a Malfurion to Haka rotation. Uh, you want to grab a global in this first rotation most of the time. It could even be paired with the Ragnaros. But uh, I think that's what we're really looking for here for L5. Ragnaros, uh, in terms of objectives on this map, doesn't gain as much value as it does in others because he can't interrupt any channels, he can't steal any skeletal defenders, but he's still very powerful here. I think I like the false side Malfurion slightly more just because of that one boss control. There's the ETC though, as we see him moved in, and Malfurion without one of those tanks being banned down. Obviously, L5 wanting to snag one for now so I don't have to deal with that later. Yep, and they have Malfurion on their side, which means the Roots can't deny that stage dive. So they have already a semi-global here, it feels, uh, going into this one. So they don't surrender all globals with this first rotation. And does Tempest go to the Grey Main here? I want to see it because it feels like standard for them. It feels like a comfort composition, one that they could win team fights with, get an early lead on, 
And against L5, snowball this map early. Take that, that third shrine in the bot. Get heroics first. And just play what they know. Play, you know, something similar to the composition they won the 2016 Summer Global Championship with. I'd like to see that, but they're definitely considering something else here as the time ticks down. They're going to go double global. Prioritize that control with the Falstad and Dahaka. Double global all the way, which does indicate that Elfa should be an out Greymane here. Uh, although Falstad, Dahaka, Greymane, and Tyrael isn't the best mix up, so maybe they can risk not having that go the other way. They could also take Greymane for themselves, to be honest with you, and kind of force engage it before Falstad or Dahaka gets that rotation in, as Greymane can put up a lot of quick upfront damage when you get that isolation. So the ban's now being circulated here for L5. Absolutely. And, you know, in terms of range damage, uh, solo range damage, we've seen only, we've seen a lot of different types of solo. Falstad is not one of them. And with how this draft has gone so far, and with uh, Hyde's massively large support hero pool, banning the Leeming here makes sense. We'll see the Zarya ban as kind of a soft ban on Vala, so they don't get super choked out. We may see the Vala just the same, but uh, it makes it a less likelihood here. Since Malfurion was already taken, uh, you don't want to go Vala Ariel here. So if you choose Vala for L5 right now, it's not as powerful as it could be, and she probably won't be able to serve that solo DPS role. And I like Zarya too because of that possible boss control too where he could have that slip. There's a signification, the holy ground, false that mighty gust. But you look at Zarya, she has her expulsion zone and there is a key moment to where maybe you can bait out Tyrael's holy ground quicker than you would want to. You drop the expulsion zone and steal it away. So that is a great double whammy there for the ban on Tempest. Now, the Vola has been great the entire match here, but I wouldn't mind seeing the Greymane on the left side here for L5 just to keep it out of the hands of Tempest. Uh, and you know, really put themselves in a spot to where they can move forward with their aggressive play. Also one that's fallen off pretty heavily, but we've seen L5 run in the past, and that is Gul'dan. Gul'dan can be great in the middle and the bottom lane, also around that Temple Shrine. We also have Ragnaros floating around. There's the Vala Ragnaros, which lends itself towards that fifth pick Gul'dan that you were talking about. Prior to this tournament, we only really saw an HGC Korea MVP Miracle, the sister team of Black running Vala solo DPS to very, very limited success. And without the secondary support here for Vala, unless they pick up something crazy here at the end, I think we are gonna see either Gul'dan or some sort of other ranged mage damage here. Gul'dan being the most common with what's left available here, the false had already snatched away. And for Tempest, you know, solo DPS Falstad, even with going into Season Marksman, isn't really an option. It's super rare to see that. So I imagine we're probably gonna see Karazim, or perhaps even a Brightwing if they want to go global into it, and some sort of other range damage. The question is what? I mean, Gul'dan is an option, but he doesn't feel like a strong one here. He doesn't pair with anything unless they go Morales. Oh, he's going to grab Greymane Rhaegar. So they are going to eventually snatch up the Greymane. It's just not the same type of composition that they saw, what well, we saw with it before, where Turiel is going to put all his eggs into the one basket, go into that uh, Worgen build at the Wizened Duelist. Yeah, Greyman's going to be a little bit more reserved compared to a normal auto attacker until Fossa gets that flying in. The Mighty Gust will obviously be the major initiator slash disengage for this team. So they're going to be playing around that. And then if they do find a moment to get isolation, Greyman dives in and gets those kills. But wouldn't mind seeing the Gunning Cocktail build from them. Now, on the fifth side here for L5, we've talked about the Golden possibility that would leave ETC solo against Ahaka and Tyrael, but it is manageable. We could see SC's Arthas once more again. The problem with this is that you don't have a lot of support for Valadin in solo damage. And you can see Ragnaros played by Junga in this case, as we're really looking for SC's hero if it's not going to be a second ranged. I'd rather see Nacho Jin on the Gul'dan, though personally, he's the hero I'm looking at here. I think he's the obvious choice if we're gonna go with something standard. Nazebo also still available. But well, they're gonna go with the Taika, so two ranged, you know, AD, if you will a basic attack damage heroes coming in for L5. And Tempest has the draft this time that is the most standard, the most comfort. It's not perfect. It's not exactly what they wanted. But I think this is their best shot they've had in these first three games. I think it's the best shot they have on Sky Temple, too. You have solid engage. You have solid hold on the battleground. You have moments. You can literally hold off on the soaking for a longer amount of time than your opponents and then force the engage with the globals. So we see globals very often, especially in the AU scene, on this battleground in particular because they are that powerful and you can force a lot of chokes and control. Also, the boss control is wonderful for them. Tychus is great for L5 the more I think about it because it's just a good anchor. Savala so can be aggressive, but he's there for that Nahaka 
Baka slash Tyrael that could be coming in for that hard engage. And with how aggressively Sign has been playing this tournament, if you've got a Tychus on your side, you punish those moves, those positioning problems. Uh, you know, they look like they're aggressive. They look like they're going to get somebody before. 16, though, he's been aggressive, almost as if he's had holy ground. You can punish that a lot faster with Tychus. Tychus also gives you the lane swap potential for the solo lane, which we've seen them use quite a bit. Korea's been doing that a lot. We've seen a little bit in Europe as well. So that's something to keep in mind as the lanes are very par far apart on this map. The solo lane is very important. And also the threat of Odin, because wonderful, around one, the temples and the boss. You, The moment you look at somebody starting to dance around the boss, you get around to half health, you pop Odin and say, okay, I dare you to fully force this. And you're working your damage, of course, bringing the area effect damage. So it definitely does work out pretty heavily here for Tychus Ragnaros. It's probably actually one of the weaker parts here on this battleground, uh, mostly because he doesn't help too much around the temples. He brings in the poke, of course, and the help. But that Sulfur Smash is always there for that lightning strike uh, to really land that kill. Yeah, I mean, in terms of big combos, when you look at it, it's not the, the comp that screams Wombo. It's still very powerful. This draft, I feel, overall is fairly mediocre for L5. They played it safe, though. They kind of responded to what we were seeing from Tempest. And if Tempest is going to take a game in this series, this is the best way to start. Here are our players, SC on Vala. Oh, I didn't get to say them all. I guess I'll say them in-game for you, Trick. Um, but yeah, this team looking to close it out, but they don't have uh, their strongest draft yet. This is going to be the game that we look at that's most on even footing uh, for these two. They have so much damage between Tychus and Vala that maybe you don't even have to have the perfect setup. You do have ETC in your Malfurion route, so you can set up the Sulfurous combo, but maybe a Sulfurous being dropped out and baiting out a Sanctification at the incorrect time can be good enough. Now, Hyde will be on Rhaegar Lockdown, will be on uh, the False Stat. We're going to have Duck Duck on Greymane. We're going to have uh, Sign on the Tyrael, and then Modern Life will be showing off his Dehaka once again. All right, man, this is it. Tempest needs to win three in a row. They've got to start here. They chose the, the first pick. It got them the Tyrael. It led to the Grey Main. This is their best option they've had so far to win a game in this best of five. Game number three. Can Tempest bring it back? We're going to Sky Temple. Game number three on Sky Temple. Wolf, the honors are yours. That's right, I didn't get to say it earlier. It's gonna be SC on the Vala, Noblesse on ETC, Swoy on Malfuria, Nacho Gen on that Tychus, and Junga will be playing the Ragnaros. And there's Lockdown on Falstead, Sign on Tyrael, Duck Duck on Grammy, Modern Life on Dahaka, and we'll be having Hyde on Rhaegar. So let's kick it off here. Tempest needs to have the game of the life here, man. I would love for them to start having a comeback here. Maybe do a Dignitas story from the Western Clash coming back through the losers brackets and make it all the way to the finals and maybe win the entire tournament, but they've got to turn it up now. I would love to see it as well. We're going to immediately see the Brush Talk into the Watchtower to control this. Uh, let's not forget, we talk about Globals, we talk about Fallstad. Lockdowns, Fallstad was part of the reason, although he went a little bit unnoticed. Uh, in the Summer Globals was why they won that. And, you know, he's one of the better ranged assassins in Korea. And although he doesn't normally play the Stormlord Falstad skin, I really like his Falstad, and you have to give him respect. He's going to be going Mage in this case, and they're going to pair it, of course, with the Worgen Greymane we were talking about before. So, uh, you know, I, I do like this composition. I do think this can work. Sanctification is going to be very important. So getting to 10 without a massive deficit is going to be key. But oh, Big already. power slide. No bless moving in. Sign does get the help from his teammates, though. Duck comes in from the left side, but he is getting focused down. Low on health. Yep. He does survive here. Sign, I don't think, will be as fortunate as he will get caught by the power slide and will just barely nip Junga on his way out. But it's not going to 
be as significant. Don't forget that solo Tychus lane swap we were talking about. Normally it's the top solo lane that's really important, but they're gonna run kind of a one, two, one here with Tychus in the bot lane. We do see the rotation down finally from Lockdown as he's already working on that ball. Yeah, it should be a 1v1 trade right now. Tychus can exchange it in the bottom. He's actually trading with Falstead, which allowed Hyde to rotate in. And Tempest will get a takedown. All right, so now we have some fight back here. Experience is 3-3. Three to three. Now Falstead can control that bottom lane with the aid of Rhaegar pushing in slightly, which means they could make an aggressive play for that middle temple. Yep, definitely so. They're going to head up here. Nobles was, you know, I say 1-2-1. One, one. He was kind of roaming between top and mid. He's now going to just help hold this shrine as things do normalize here. Tempest has the lead uh, on shrine. Excuse me, they have a slight deficit on shrine, but they could try to make that play for the mid shrine, as you mentioned. And that is exactly what they're going to do, trying to push Nobles off here. And they will do just that. There's no way out here besides a power slide left. No way to hold onto the shrine is what I meant to say here, as he will actually be focused down. And I don't think he survives here. Swipe no. goes for the heal. Hyde gets blocked, though, on the wolf fight. And Lockdown is actually going to be the first to be targeted down. That is so unfortunate for Tempest. They will trade out the ball, though. Ball gets focused down. Duck on the right side, working the auto attacks. He's low on health, too. Swoy going for it. Does he have the Moonfire? No, he misses out on it. But here comes Jongha with the Ragnaros attack. But Grammy is able to get away. L5 looking for another takedown. Unfortunately, not getting it. I can't believe Noblesse lived there. Yeah, I mean, you know, the missed kill, unfortunately, there onto Greymane is unfortunate. Sign going to be ticked off regardless, though. Without vision of the uh, watchtower, there was no way for Swoy to actually hit that Moonfire. <laughs> he took the blind shot into the bush, which didn't work out. So impressive retreat there uh, by Duck Duck. But as this stands, it's a win for L5. They do get a little bit of this uh, extra top temple. In terms of EXP, though, Tempest does get a slight lead. That global control they have with the Falstad and the Haka pre-10. There's just no global for L5 whatsoever. They have these strong lane swap ability with Tychus who can do both solo uh, and you know kind of a roaming composition type play with this solid wave clear. But Tempest is just looking to get to 10 without a deficit. And so far, despite that early pick there, but despite that bad exchange. I think they're on their way to it. Rhaegar right now actually going for the Ghost Wolf build here. With that level one, he's able to zoom around the battleground and help out in fights. Also pretty helpful uh, against a ball that potentially is chasing you down. It gives you the escape and allows you to play slightly hyper-aggressive compared to what you would normally have, but not the Lightning Shield build that we've seen in the past and that chain healing to really bring in that heal. I think it could be good against damage comps, the ones that we have here, Vala, Tychus, and Ragnaros with that boat constant coming. So Hyde looking for that hyper-aggressive Rhaegar play. A lockdown being super aggressive here with his position gets immediate immediately rooted. Nice uh, cleanse by Hyde right afterwards. And I do have to, to say the wolf build has always been my go-to, and not just because I'm wolf, but on big maps like it's this. It's because you're wolf. Come on, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> on, this, on this map, you know, you have a lot more mobility. In, in a way, he's somewhat semi-global. He has to hearth less because he goes barrel heart here. Duck Duck is playing with fire, Ooh. though. It's the last part of that hungering arrow. He should escape here. Lockdown's going to try to turn this fight. Nobles with a nice power slide, though, to allow the retreat. I feel like every time Lockdown flies in, it's actually bad news for Tempest. They should just remove his Z button because every single time it has not worked out for him the last couple of days. Uh, I, one, I think his fly-ins are a bit aggressive in terms of their very telegraph to where they're going. If you want to fly in, put yourself some wiggle room. Whether it be you put him on the top left corner so you have an escape to the top right or the escape down to the bottom left. Every time the Blessed just power slides or knockbacks and it's completely fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd say some over-aggressive flights, but also some great reactions by L5. It might work against a lesser team, but against a team like this one, this simply has not been. With that pick, the control here for L5 is real uh, on this bot temple. With a near kill on Duck Duck, they had to retreat, and now this shrine control should likely get 10 first for L5, although we do see that false stat soak in the mid lane. They're actually going to aggressively invade here right now, but there's another one of these Nobles retreating power slides. He gets cleansed here on the tongue grab, and now Duck Duck's once again caught out. And I have to be critical. We, we've talked about this a lot this tournament, Gilly and I especially. Duck Duck has not played a very good gray main, and when you're going for this hybrid build, I understand why you would put him on, you would put Duck Duck on this hero, but even still, positionally, he's made several mistakes in this game already. 
and there seems to be a bit of a mistake between Tempest and L5. If you look at the experience lead right now, and it's actually even, which you would say, oh, that's good for Tempest, they're holding on, but they have double global right now, and L5 has matched him on par here with experience, and they control the battleground better than Tempest. That is actually not a good sign if you are a Tempest fan. Ball set is, of course, rotating between the top and the middle to keep up with that experience, but the entire Shrine phase was forfeited as L5 grabbed all the shots. And with some of the positioning mistakes we're seeing from uh, the gray main from Duck Duck, I, I kind of like this hungering arrow build that we're seeing because he's kind of caught alone oftentimes. That actually can help them secure some takedowns. We're seeing the hold on both Strafe and Reign of Vengeance and the Mosh Pit and Stage Dive. This will almost certainly be Stage Dive, but L5 doesn't want Tempest to know it until the last second because if there's ever a moment where we could see Noblesse slide in and get a, a winning Mosh, get three or more, something crazy like that, he's still gonna keep that opportunity available. So I like this choice a lot. It keeps Tempest guessing. We're gonna see a collapse here onto SC. The Gust here will isolate Noblesse, but he still gets out a great cleanse by Swoy and this is so much used. Two heroics and the flight, all for nothing. Incredible disengage from L5. It was a bit aggressive to do that out of the turrets, but uh, Bola instantly just retreating away from the area. Noblesse waiting out to the last second before he had to use his power slide. He could have been caught there by that mighty gust, but did he even get affected by it? And if he had been hit mid power slide, he would have been slammed against the wall. So great heads up play by Noblesse. Jong Ha is in trouble on the top as Modern Life is looking for a kill, but he retreats and he gets away with the uh, hair on his chinny chin chin. Yeah, they did try to use uh, Sulfurous Smash to slow that down and stop it. Didn't end up being necessary there in the end of the day. So that's one thing they gained from that. And they will, of course, force a hearth back. So small victories here for Tempest as we actually have an L5 pause here. But small victories. They're down a level right now. I believe it's 12 to 11 currently. And as you mentioned, the use of globals here uh, just hasn't been successful so far. They've used it rather than soaking several times already now for aggressive plays to look for kills, and they failed consistently every time too. So, uh, you know, the soak, the lack of soak, I should say, is a problem. They're behind in EXP. They have this powerful Tyrael comp, but they didn't put Duck Duck actually on full work, and he didn't go into uh, the Wizen Duelist. He started off, of course, with his uh, W extension and then went into Cocktails at four and seven. So. A little bit surprised this is. I know it's not solo gray main and it's not a, a crazy amount of support that he's got there, um, which is why I suppose, uh, you know, Duck Duck is playing it instead of um, Lockdown. But still, I mean, you draft into a Tyrael comp, you bring the gray main out, you've been showing all tournament long, but then you put Duck Duck on it. And throughout this tournament, it's been a liability, and in this game, it is as well. Yeah, usually by now, if you're rubbing a double comp composition, you're wanting to have multiple kills in terms of double globals, or you want to be able to have the map opened up, and there just haven't been a hint of that yet. I would have liked to see the Mercenary control the top right corner, the Knights a little bit earlier, get that push with the Haka happening, and then have Ball be in the middle, ready for a rotation onto a jump on the bottom, and the rotation just haven't been there. On the other side, though, when you talk about L5, they've done such a good job of Okay, if ETC is going to rotate to the top left and he's moving between the middle and the top lane, we have two people there to support him if things get out of trouble. L5 is obviously prepared and ready for what Tempest would have come their way, and they've executed defense brilliantly. Definitely true. It looks like this was going to be a trade in terms of temples. When you look at the map, though, L5 is getting much more. They're actually going to be able to push down an entire fort here. Slow rotation up for Tempest. Very, very late on the punish. And uh, Falstad isn't going to come in this time for the Gust to punish. And I can understand that, but he's already behind in Temples, which means we can actually see a faster rotation away from the Temple for Jung'a, making this potentially a 5v4. And uh, if Tempest stays around too long, he can just Molten Core into here, so they will have to retreat. Lockdown just barely finishes that Temple. We'll have to Hearth home, which means he's off the map. And risky as it could be, L5 is posturing for a boss. You're forcing uh, potentially Tempest to rotate over here. I like that. Power slide by Noblesse, even though it didn't hit anything, could have been a kill. And they're going to force a rotation from Tempest here. Yeah, L5 was actually really set up for the false set rotation to the middle lane in case he didn't move in through those bushes, but Tempest's false set actually went all the way home to defend. And they just go ahead and poke the boss there to see where Tempest is at. Usually you can get your opponents to show their cards, but Tempest just floating around the right side deters L5 from grabbing that boss. And with the big push in the top lane happening and Dahaga revealing himself, Ragnaros is forced to go defend. And 
Now five will casually just wait this out. They've taken three forts already in terms of map control, and they have no qualms dealing with the pressure coming their way, but Sign looking to make a play. Now he doesn't have holy ground, but he's still gonna flank here coming from the side. Unfortunately, immediately caught. There's that Tychus value we're talking about in terms of damaging, punishing Sign for these aggressive plays. He comes again with one more Aldrum, but here comes the flank for Jonga. Good splits here for Tempest. They do not want to get smashed here. Grouped up. Everyone's gonna get them out here, but they still need to retreat. Big grenade dismounting several, and they're still in the chase. Jonga's coming in. Jonga with the great dismount on Duck Duck allows for the chase to be possible for L5. Now, they're not gonna get the catch out as Tempest does a really good job of retreating. The smites from Sign in particular were helpful in that case. Also, there's always the threat of Mighty Gus, so Ragnaros can't go for the full engage. He was more sitting on the outskirts waiting for a mistake, but Tempest did not make one, so kudos to them on their disengage. Now, L5 rotates to the bottom and they take the free experience from the Giants push pushing earlier, and they get closer to level 16. That they do here. Tempest still has all keeps up, which is super critical. They're not massively behind the EXP, which is a given, considering they have these globals. And this time it finally feels like they've been worth it. We've even seen Rhaegar rotate in to help clear these lanes. He has the ability to rotate quicker with the wolf build you were talking about. So I like how they've been playing this in terms of uh, retreating and disengaging too in that last fight. It was impressive. We didn't see any over commitments there to the boss. They were careful and safe against that uh, you know, slide in for Noble S. They still have an opportunity to take this game. This isn't the snowball -y game I feel like L5 wanted when they chose this map. Sign going to be aggressive again. Still doesn't have that holy ground. He's looking for it. Yeah, there gets to a point where 16 hits, and I want Tempest to just go. It's finally the time for them to make the play here, because these uh, temples will force a keep to get low, which could open up the map for L5. Zhang ha does turn into Moncourt on the right side. Sign being focused down. He has used the sanctification for now. He retreats to the left there with the aid of Hyde. So fierce match does come out. Sign falls. Zhang is chasing here on the same time. Lockdown's in the bottom left. He has used Mighty Gust. So the force of the fight has occurred, and they are rotating on the left side. Dahaka just rotates to the top to grab some Temple Shrine's faces, but L5 is going to take that fight with that one kill and grab map control. Oh, Modern Life got interrupted on his hearth by a minion shot here, and now he's going to be trapped and caught. We'll see if there's any rotation to save him. They're coming from lane. He has to use his burrow. He has to use his stays. His nitrogen comes forward with the body block. They're going to try to save him. Already Ancestral was used. Duck Duck super low here. We'll have to go ahead and retreat. A close call there in the top lane. Man, that was really, really rough. And now all resources spent on retreat or the failed fight for Tempest. And it was almost just to contradict what you said. You wanted to see them go right when they hit 16. It was L5 that did just that, however, on the contrary to, to what you were saying. And got the double stun there and made it so Tempest was not, unable to take a fight. And that's the problem, too. You mentioned that a lot of reasons were used just so Tempest could walk away from that fight, which has allowed both these temples to be grabbed by L5, and they are getting shots on keep pressure right now, which is great for them. They can just play passively here, continue to hold the temple on the top, and that is a wonderful trade for them. Noblesse power sliding away, watching out for that Eldruin's holy ground that could pop out and cut him off from the rest of his team. And L5 will continue to play this patient game while Tempest doesn't really have any heroics to make the aggressive play. You know, the sad story here is, I, I feel for Tempest, is they, they just feel like they're being grinded out of this game. The, the passive, safe macro play for L5, they're not taking risks. They're taking quick, snappy flight fights when they need to. They're punishing defensively the aggressive moves of Tempest. You've got four champions in Modern Life. Modern Life at his first land, being forced onto playing more passive heroes than he'd normally like to, based on his performance in this tournament. And this time, he's playing Dahaka, a global hero, but hasn't been able to find value because L5 is just simply out macroing him. And this could be the end of Tempest here in this tournament. They had a great run, but they really have to step it up. It's not over yet. They remain with all three keeps. They are definitely going to have to take a fight, I'd say, before 20 if they want this game to be theirs. Or L5 is looking to go 3-0 once more. As we posture around boss here, Trick, the top push is being dealt with by Dahaka. Looks like we're going to see a threatening rotation upwards. Meanwhile, Junga this safely... This might be big. Lockdown should just fly in right now. Uh, sadly, though, Tempest isn't quite full aware where the three members are. There's two heading to the top to focus down Modern Life, which would have gave Boss the chance to dive in, but they just didn't know he was there. Modern Life being focused down. Adaptation has been popped. He will heal with the burrow and the charge and allowing him to tunnel around. This is Tempest decisive. starts to boss out. This is decisive. This is what I like to see. You see a big rotation up like that. No this blast. is how you use globals. They're going to come in here. No bless is looking for that. Gust goes in, though. There's too much boss control here for Tempest. We talked about this in the draft. This is the decisive move. These are the kind of moves Tempest is going to have to make to make a comeback in this game. Nice boss take here. And Dahaka just comes down with a brush stalker. No problem. 
The first real failed macro play by L5 in this best of five. You can't really fault them too, for it too much. No blessings floating around that right side. They would have been fine in terms of being able to set that up. But the sanctification, the control that you mentioned was too powerful. But here's the bad news for Tempest. They get the boss, but L5 just cleans it up without much problems. You need to kind of push with that boss to get any value out of it. But obviously Tempest wants to take the map control. They rotate to the middle and grab the temple. They're trying to do too much at once here. They need to group. They need to make sure they're not soaking, you know, with Falstead up there. They need to have five together. Look to use Gust. Gust is up in 10 seconds. Try to get a fight here. Here comes the Odin. They're going to try to push this in. They don't have 20 yet, but Picks will gain it here for L5. Signs coming for the flank on the left side. He comes in. Looking for the Holy Ground. He's going to save it. Lockdown so low. Sign jumps in. Dr. joins in as well. L5 doesn't really have to fully fight this. He can kite backwards, apply damage when necessary. As they would love to get 20 instead. They're continuing the push. Now, Rydros does drop the Sulfur Smash. It does not connect. However, Duck Duck low on health. SCSC is chasing. He gets the kill on Greymane. And that will allow L5 to turn around and grab the temple. Jung Ha will drop the Molten Core. He's looking for lockdown. Can he snipe him? Ancestor Healing comes out, so Tempest will save their fall stat for now, but this keep is taking damage. Yeah, this is essentially going to secure a keep. It wastes Ancestral. Sometimes you just have to use an Ancestral like this. It's the most painful Ancestral you can ever cast, but you know that's a kill if you don't do it. And if you don't do it, you lose Falstad here. You might just lose the game. 20's up for L5. They're doing direct damage now to this top keep. They will retreat. Again, this is L5's way. Never force something. Never push when you don't have to. They get the keep anyways with the final shots there. Now they can rotate around to siege up the bot keep wall because that's their best objective. They're going to push that with the siege science they get for free. Tempest is going to try to soak for 20 here, you'd imagine, to try to take that fight even. If you look at the top lane, you can see the Ragnaros did go up to clear that wave. They want to make sure there's no separate extra pressure when they begin to siege up that bot lane. We're scratching, but there is good news for Tempest. With the Catapults being pushing in the middle in the butt top lane, they do have experience being delivered to them, which does give them level 20, which allows them to grab abilities that make their globals that much stronger. The Epic Mount in particular could also have Apex Predator from Dahaka to get those isolations. But L5 so far in this game has not made a mistake in terms of allowing one person to be too far away from a teammate. But Tempest still has to believe that it's a possibility. Sulfurus so connects as Hyde is able to drop the cleanse, so Tempest will survive that big play there from jong -Nan. Super, super important cleanse. They need to defend this right now. We're seeing big red button being used here. Nautrogen has this Odin. They're going to seize this up with those siege giants. Tempest needs to hold on a little bit longer. They need 20. Already you can see in the top, Lockdown is dealing with that push. He's, He's going to come the gust. Here he comes. Right before 20, 20. Very close here. Big mighty gust going in here. jong in the back left. Odin continues to poke away. Duck Duck is getting focused down, and he falls once again. SESC -E just turns around round and brings in the auto attacks modern light on the back attempting to survive but to no avail he falls a 5v3 sign hoping to survive yeah he will go down here he sanks modern life down his first international tournament here and that may be his last death as l5 pushes for the win against Tempest. Tempest, a team of four champions from Summer 2016. They're looking for a second big major title, but it's not gonna be this one as we do see the root go down here on the lockdown. He's silenced as well. Pick goes off onto Hyde as the game ends, and that is it. GG, L5 will win both series here against uh, Tempest with a flawless 6-0 score. L5 now having the chance for redemption against MVV Plaque in the Grand Finals. Obviously, that uh, winner's finals was quite a doozy for them as it went to game number five, and they fell down here to the loser's finals, but they come back with a vengeance. We're really kind of taking uh, the heat on the Tempest here, finishing up with that 3-0. So we have a Grand Finals on the board for us. Taking things away from Tempest, or, or you know, to take what Tempest should take the, uh, away from this, as I finally get through the sentence, um, <laughs> is that Modern Life got international tournament experience. He flew to China, got to play uh, against a, a Chinese team, several, in fact, in front of a Chinese crowd. That's tough at your first big sure. land. And now he's got that experience under his belt. The roster of Tempest starts to feel a little bit cleaner. Um, I do feel like Signed is going to have to play a little bit more passively. Either that or the team's going to have to change their play style to play around him because he was a little bit of a liability here as well. But 
The, the Tempest that we cast in this series, despite the fact that they lost 0-3, I feel like was a much stronger and decisive Tempest than what we saw yesterday against Super Perfect Team. So adjustments were made. The team looks better and better from day two to day three. They're out of this tournament, uh, but look for them to do well in the next phase of HTC Korea. Yeah, and something to also look at is, although they might not be as good as MP Black or L5, obviously being the top two in Korea, they're still top three and I guess the best region now for Heroes of the Storm with them still making it all the way to the semifinals. There's nothing for them to scoff at. Now look at Jong Ha here. He was an MVP with his Ragnaros play. Had a couple of almost close picks too with the Sulfurous match but definitely did a good job of controlling Dahaka in that top lane. F4 did not fall until after 10 minutes which is not normally seen especially on Sky Temple. That sign says L5 fighting Noble S I love you. <laughs> as we have even Korean fans here in the Chinese crowd. The 3-0 victory here on our final map of Sky Temple was definitely the closest game of the three. Tempest gave it a shot with their comfort draft, the Tyrael Grey main, but at the end of the day, they couldn't make it work, Trixler. And uh, I feel like this is, again, a learning experience for them, but I'm super hyped for that grand final, that rematch, that super close series we just watched. We're going to see it again. That's right. The final series of the day is coming soon. It will be the grand finals. L5 taking on MVP Black again. We'll be right back. Niche is the major threat here, constantly keeping eyes on all five members of Misfit. So now they understand, okay, well, our opponents have eyes on us. Let's just make some plays here. Here comes the Moncore Leyline Shield. Big Bolton swings the fear and smash. Members dying left and right. Splendor focused down. Nurok on the right, too. Gargantuan stands as the only member here for the Misfits near the court. Nurok will eventually get swung on, but Dignitas cleans up that fight almost too easily. Yeah. If the teammate stays spread out, they can be in a spot to win the game. Remember, Molten Core available. <laughs> and it's poking away at Odin here, doing a pretty uh, significant damage here, actually. And Dignitas, you know, they have a lack of... They have a lack of resolve. Oh, oh my there gosh, go. Gloro goes in! Jaina, Trixler, a lack of Jaina. Standing play from Gloro. Your destiny ends here. Watching out for T. Actually, it was Nurak coming in, but either way, doesn't matter who's Doom. playing into Haka. Fnatic's able to take care of it. Fnatic pop and Drape bring out the damage to deter anyone from moving in too far. Nurak will use it as a decent be just fine, but here is Bloodlust. Chromie focusing down. Nurak will be able to heal on up, but God, he can't even escape being slowed down. He shoots the duck. There's the drag on Wobby Tyrael being locked down the right side. Finally, he goes down. Misfits holding their own. You go, I stay. The boy, the big boy coming in. They're trying to look for the head and they're getting it. There comes the mosh pit. Immediately interrupted. Didn't even go off completely, but they get the kill against false and even before he has a chance to gust. Yeah, and now look at the rest of Team 8. Their health bar is so low. Howling Blast is going to connect their butts. Oh. Looks like he's going down with the mosh pit. He's going to get the peel. Three people are stuck in it. Can they get the kill? Chris Matt with one. Zalia now with the last man Three, four <laughs> people dead. That mosh pit jumping. He cannot get it on this ETC. His mosh pits are insane.
Hell yeah! Let's bust up another! Okay, falls down in the top, still working down the fourth. The boss is almost down. Sanctification on the point, Trick. Sanctification maybe a bit too early. Can JPL get in there? He's holding it. He's definitely holding it. Zelia coming in as well. They're etching forward. Bring it across to pop out, but Snitch with the mighty gust. No, the boss goes over to the Misfits, but the Dignitas has chosen to fight, and they are first in members down left and right. Tyrion gonna try and get some damage on. He will hit Rhaegar. JPL continues to live. Two for two trade overall, but Snitch looking for some damage. The slowing sands. Misfits cannot walk away. Wait, look at the Enduro Anomaly! There's no escape! They're stuck in a pit! Here goes Dignitas taking out damage on Dark Maul, and we're gonna get the snipes here from Snitch and Chromie! So 